Just before this video starts, we would like to thank each and every one of you for subscribing to our channel, as we recently hit 100,000 subscribers. We are so grateful for all of your amazing support, and we value every single like in our videos and every single comment which we love reading and replying to. That being said, we hope you enjoy the video. I know it's dark, but a like would be really appreciated. Thanks, and let's begin. Booker T had a hard time growing up, as he lost both of his parents at age 14. During his younger years, he worked for the American fast food restaurant Wendy's for two and a half years. But the wage wasn't really cutting it for him. This is when Booker T, alongside his partners, decided to stage a series of armed robberies at different Wendy's stores, wearing their work uniforms as disguises. Because of the perpetrator's uniforms and familiarities with the restaurant chain's operations, police suspected that the robberies were an inside job. So, it was to this knowledge Booker T was found guilty of committing this crime. Consequently, Booker T was found guilty of two aggravated counts of robbery and was sentenced to five years in prison. He served 19 months in prison before being released on parole. In 1983, Scott Hall was charged with second-degree murder after fatally shooting a man in the head with a gun. Although this crime was acted in self-defense, according to Hall himself, the memory of what happened on that fateful day has burned in his brain. As Scott Hall recalled the incident in a 2011 interview for ESPN. In 1983, Hall was working as a bartender at a strip club when he became involved in a heated dispute over a girl. The man, who Scott Hall went on to kill, smashed all of Scott Hall's windows out of his car. This angered Hall, who found out about this, and went on to confront the man. He recalled himself drilling the guy to the floor when he noticed the man's shirt up, revealing a gun that he reached for. They wrestled around for the gun until Hall managed to take it and shot the man in the head. Hall was charged with second degree murder, but the charges were dropped due to lack of evidence. The most famous murder trial of a WWE wrestler has to go to that of Chris Benoit. In 2007, Chris Benoit killed his wife Nancy Benoit and strangled his seven-year-old son Daniel Benoit before hanging himself in his weight room. There are many conspiracy theories suggesting how Benoit was framed for those murders, but I'm not going into any of these. Benoit's wife Nancy was found wrapped in a towel with blood under her head, and his son Daniel was found in his bed. They both died from asphyxiation. It was after these two murders that Benoit left a voicemail to Chavo Guerrero. Chavo Guerrero called Benoit after hearing the voicemail and noticed that Benoit sounded tired and groggy. He proceeded to call Benoit again after their phone call ended due to concerns about Benoit's tone and demeanor. Benoit called Chavo back after he missed his initial call. The conversation ended with Benoit saying, I love you Chavo. Benoit placed copies of the Bible alongside the bodies of his wife and son, as well as a third Bible on his weightlifting machine. Benoit then committed suicide in his weight room, using a weightlifting machine to break his own neck. There was a note found in the Bible which said, I am preparing to leave this earth. The search history on Benoit's computer showed he had researched the quickest and easiest way to break a neck. Johnny K-9 is a wrestler who worked briefly for the WWF during the 1980s. He wrestled in many tag team matches, but his biggest match in WWF was against Hulk Hogan. Outside the ring, Johnny K-9 is famous for his history of legal problems. He was the leader of a motorcycle gang known as Satan's Choice Motorcycle Gang. One of the crimes the gang committed was blowing up a police station using a bomb which caused $133,000 in damages. However, Johnny K-9's most famous encounter with the law was when he was charged with first degree murder and two counts of conspiracy to commit murder. He murdered a lawyer and her husband, but the investigation against him collapsed after a long preliminary hearing. 
In early 2011, Johnny K9 was charged with yet another first degree murder and attempted murder. In 2013, he pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder, and the murder charges were stayed. He was sentenced to 13 years in prison, which was reduced to 4 years and 8 months after factoring in time served. Many of you might not know who Hardbody Harrison is, and that's fair enough because he only worked as a jobber for WCW back in 1995. He appeared on WCW Monday Nitro as well as 1997 Starcade, but he was never a major name in the business. However, in 2007, he was convicted on charges relating to keeping eight women as sex slaves in two homes he owned in Georgia. Harrison claimed the women were living in his home willingly, along with his wife and child, because they were training as professional wrestlers, and that he helped them quit drugs. A few of the women ended up going to the police, which saw Harrison being charged with aggravated sexual abuse, forced labour, sex trafficking, and witness tampering. Upon conviction, Harrison was sentenced to life in prison. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please show your support by leaving a like and sharing this video, as it really does help us a lot. Don't forget to comment below too, and we will pin up the best comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video from us. Lastly, for daily wrestling facts and more, follow all of our social media accounts, which are on screen and in the description. Thanks, and until the next video.